What's going on, Penn State fans? I'm Josh Taylor here on the Happy Valley Insider with Penn State Rivals. And the season's coming up. It's the summertime right now. Recruiting's heating up, of course. Got a lot of commitments that have already come and then a lot more on the way. Uh, but we have a season to prepare for. And as uh, we start this countdown, uh, season's coming up rather quickly. I'm going to be going through every single position group for Penn State and really just walking you through season expectations, you know, what happened last year, what the, that position group can really look like this year coming up. Because Penn State is trying to win a Big Ten title. That's, that's the, of course, first goal uh, is win the games, you know, 1-0 oh every week. But get that Big Ten title and try to fight for a, uh, fight for a playoff spot would absolutely be the uh, big time um, result for this season. And the expectations are high. A lot of people are hyping Penn State. Saying, like, watch out, Penn State could be the dark horse team this year. You know, Drew Aller has a high ceiling. There's a lot to expect out of this group, a lot of big time returning guys. Um, the defense looks great, but on this episode, I'm going to be taking a look at a group that uh, is definitely going to have to help out a young quarterback in Drew Aller, and that's going to be the running back room, which was stellar last year. We didn't really know what to expect out of uh, two guys who were both freshmen. And they just came onto the scene like, they, like, hey, this is nothing new. There is no leaping competition from high school uh, to this college game. They hit the ground literally running, and it was a great duo. Uh, and that's something that I want to talk about is the the running back room. So first off, let's take a look at um, the the roster for what Penn State really has this year. Of course, Kevon Lee left. Um, but right now, led by the one and only Nicholas Singleton, the, the guy who, in my opinion, has one of the – the best burst, one of the big time home run ability in a running game in college football. You know, when you take a look at uh, what he did last year, just showing that contact balance, his ability to create those big time plays, you know, get to the outside, set, get outside that edge there and just really hit home, show that burst, show that speed. That's what makes Nicholas Singleton so special. And he did it all season uh, last year. And then you have a guy who complimented him so well with Katron Allen, another guy who's a sophomore with him this year, another Virginia boy. I'm a Virginia guy. Um, came from Norfolk, from uh, Virginia. Then went to the IMG Academy. Um, but Katron Allen surprised the heck out of me, not because I didn't think he was going to be good. I think Katron's going to be a fantastic running back. But his, his poise and how he really just fought through tackles – same thing with uh, Nicholas Singleton, that contact balance is just a little bit different with Katron. You, you saw a little bit more of that strength side of it. Um, in my opinion, Nicholas Singleton has a strength, but he has much more of that speed, that elusiveness um, that Katron Allen has, that, that, that strength. So really, you can say it's the thunder and the lightning duo um, of Nicholas Singleton and Katron Allen. Uh, I think these two are have, uh, setting themselves up for a big-time season this year, just building off of what they did last year. And I'll take a look at the numbers, the PFF grades, the stats, and such. But then they have Trey Potts, who transferred over from Minnesota. He's a redshirt senior. He's coming back home to, to Pennsylvania, where he's from, Williamsport. But he's really, in my opinion, he, he's a key guy in this group, too. And I know he didn't have like the, the flashiest numbers at Minnesota. Of course, they've had Mo Ibrahim and uh, a great, you know, uh, a great group of running backs for so long over at Minnesota with uh, coach PJ Fleck, but he really brings over something that might be lacking from this group um, this season, which they had out of uh Kevon Lee last year. And that's that really mentorship, but that veteran status as a red shirt senior, he's been at this for a long time. Yes. He's new to the culture of Penn state, you know, new to the running back room and getting used to that side of it. But when it comes to, you know, and it's not like Nicholas Singleton and Katron Allen, some of these other young guys need help with this, but just setting the expectation, you know, leading by example, saying like, Hey, we're going to practice like this. Like this is our routine. We're going to like, you know, spend time together. We're going to like get to know each other and really grow as a group. So the offense can click at the best of its ability. Um, and I, I think that Trey Potts is going to have a, a good role this year. Not saying he's going to, you know, get like a ton of touches, like 35, 40% of touches, but I think that Trey Potts will still have a, a key um, role in this this season with you know being a mentor, but also on the field as well. Uh, then you've got two freshmen coming in that really uh, intrigued me a lot. London Montgomery uh, out of uh, Scranton, Pennsylvania, Scranton Prep, had the injury at the end of the season. I really like London's game a lot. I think he's going to be really good once he gets healthy, once he hits the ground running. Um, I saw a lot out of London, saw him at some camps in July last year at Penn State. Right before he committed, 
Uh, but then just checking out London's tapes, I think he's got a chance to be a really good running back for Penn State in the future. And then you got Cam Wallace, too, another guy. Went into uh, SEC country, Mount Vernon, Georgia, and took him out of Montgomery County. Uh, another guy with, uh, you know, he's a little bit smaller, 5'9, 175 pounds, has a great burst to him. I think he's another guy with a lot of upside. So you really take a look at the recruiting that Penn State has really been going through uh, with running backs. And it's continuing in 2024 and on. Uh, they're doing a really good job. And I think they hit uh, a home run for what they want to do, filling that funnel. You know, we don't know how long Nicholas Singleton and Catron Allen are going to be here. Um, but having those guys where they can really develop and be ready for, uh, you know, London Montgomery and Cam Wallace both, I think the future is bright for both of them. And then you've got Emil Davis, redshirt sophomore, uh, Tyler Holsworth, another redshirt sophomore, and then redshirt uh, senior out of uh, Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, Tank Smith, 5'7", 220, really is a tank. Um, at that size, just running guys over. So they have some good depth. They have some really good young players. Um, but of course, you know, I, I'm obviously looking at that that duo that they have with Nicholas Singleton and Katron Allen because it's special what they were able to do last year with such a young group. Um, and really, when you take a look at just, in my opinion, when you think of the best running back duos in college football, you think about the Big Ten. You take a look at Ohio State. Uh, with Trayvon Henderson, Mayan Williams. Then you go to Michigan. You take a look at Blake Corum and uh, Donovan Edwards and what they're able to do. That's that's two really special duos that Penn State uh, is trying to compete with. And I think Nicholas Singleton and Catron Allen are right up there with them. I think last year was a good appetizer, a good little preview of what to expect out of those two this year. I think both can take a leap forward, which is crazy to say because you saw a lot of big-time plays. Like I said, Nicholas Singleton with those home run uh, ability outside of the uh, the edge, being able to just create uh, space and then make the big opportunities out of that space. That's what I think Nicholas Singleton brings is that home run ability, kind of like what Saquon did. And I hate really comparing someone to Saquon, but just having that ability like Saquon did uh, when he was here is special. But then Catron Allen said, look, guys, I can do the same thing. It might not be the same. It might be, you know, going through the A gap, B gap, C gap, whatever. But he had some big time home run plays too. You know, runs over 15 yards, run over 25 yards. That's what's really going to make a big difference in this running back room this year. If those two guys can get even better at that, I think Penn State is looking good for the season coming up. And if you're a Penn State fan, yes, you're excited about that. But if you're a Drew Allar, you're looking at this running back room like, guys, I have a lot of help. Yeah, the, the wide receiver room, which I'm going to talk about as well in a, in a video coming up. There's some question marks for the wide receiver room. I'm not going to lie. There's some question marks. There's a lot of wild cards. There's some new guys coming in that need to really learn and adapt quick. But this running back room, if you're Drew Allard, you're like, look, we're set. I have no problem with this running back room. I'm confident in what we have. I feel good about this. I can rely on these guys. I can lean on these guys. So let's go back over. I'm going to take a look at some stuff that we had last year. Um, so talk about how good uh, Nicholas Singleton and Katron Allen were. Let's take a look at the numbers. Let's go to the experts. And I know some people don't look at PFF. I do look at PFF and their grades and how they really go through things. I mean, of course, they show us uh, Katron Allen. They show us Trey Potts. They have Nicholas Singleton on there. So Katron Allen is actually the highest rated uh, running back for Penn State last year with an 81 overall offensive grade, an 84.2 running grade, and a receiving grade, which is something I want to see more out of these two guys too. We saw a little bit out of both of them. But once again, you know, Drew Allar, he has a cannon, but he's going to have to learn to, to dump some of these off. You know, take those safe plays to where Katron Allen and Nicholas Singleton can make some home run abilities out of it, make some big plays happen. Don't always go for the deep balls to your, one of your new wide receivers that you're still getting used to. Have that safety blanket of one of these two guys that can make big things happen. So that's the one thing I think we'll see an increase of is the receiving grade. Yeah, that seems kind of harsh right now. They're not wide receivers. I get it. But still, I think Katron Allen and Nicholas Singleton improving in the receiving game um, can just elevate this team once again even more so. I think you know they're going to spread some things out. They're going to... Once again, Drew Allard's not like some crazy mobile uh, quarterback. He's gonna he can move out the pocket. He you know he has some wheels on him, but he's not gonna be running it. You know, tucking it and running it all the time. So having something like this on the you know third and longs or plays where you don't want to get too risky, turn the ball over, you're gonna be able to kind of dump it off to these guys. So that's what I want to see moving forward. 
And then Trey Potts comes over. He had a 77.9 uh, overall offensive grade last year, 77.2 running grade at Minnesota. And then Nicholas Singleton, 74.7 overall grade with a 79 running grade. When I look at this, I see green. I see green out of uh, a guy who was a veteran and then two really young players who were only sophomores this year who play like veterans already. So, yes, that's really good. People are like, I don't know, 74, 79, whatever. That's not really good. It actually is, though, especially when you were a true freshman last year. Katron Allen having an 84.2 running grade as a true freshman is absurd, to be honest with you. Nicholas Singleton, as special and talented as he is, having almost an 80 as a true freshman, once again, is absurd. So, yes, the future is bright, um, but you really see it in these numbers here of how PFF really looked at the um, the stats and just really graded how they performed last year. Um, and once again, I know not everyone looks at PFF, but you want to look at the real numbers. Let's look at how they really performed last year. Nicholas Singleton, in his first season, 156 attempts, broke 1,000 yards in over 10 touchdowns. So he had 1,061 yards with a 6.8 average, once again, what I was telling you about, that home run ability, being able to take small plays and turning them into big plays. You're not just running the ball to wear down the defense. You're running the ball, and it is a legitimate threat for defenses that you're facing. And defenses fear these two guys. 6.8 average, 12 touchdowns. And then once again, like I said, 11 catches for 85 yards, whatever, a touchdown. That's cool. That that should come up this year. I think it will. I think they'll look to target these guys more. Um you know, especially losing, you know, Britton Strange, losing Parker Washington, losing Mitchell Tinsley. They need somewhere to be able to dump the ball down to in some of these safe plays, like I said, to get the ball moving downfield, pick up some third downs. So Nicholas Singleton obviously had a crazy good season. That's that's why he has the hype that he has so far this, you know, going into the season. It's well deserved. And like I said, I think he can be even better. I think he'll pass 1,000 yards again. I think he can look towards the 13, 1,400 yards. And I know you're going to say, how is that possible with Cade Tron Allen? I think Penn State's going to run the ball a little bit more than they did last year, and there's nothing wrong with that. I think they're going to spread it out a little bit differently. Um, and, I mean, Sean Clifford had 69 registered rushes. He didn't really have 69 design runs. But I think they're going to really distribute, you know, a 50-50 between Katron Allen and Nicholas Singleton. And last year, one thing I noticed is Franklin was good at saying, who's got the hot hand right now? Who are we rolling with? And he really leaned on this guy. So when Nicholas was hot, he was handed off to, to Nicholas. And when Katron was hot, he was feeding Katron that rock. And that's what I want to see him do more of this season. So Katron had 167 attempts for 867 yards, 5.2 average with 10 touchdowns and one thing i want to point out with the pff grades you're going to look at this and say look nicholas singleton ran for uh less attempts and had more yards higher average more touchdowns how was he graded lower the thing you have to go back and watch and this is not a knock at singleton this is more credits towards katron allen it's showing you how katron allen ran the ball breaking tackles um times where he was supposed to be taken down but he wasn't just the details, the, the the things that you don't really see on paper. You have to go back and watch the film and saying, look, he the, the times where he was supposed to get tackled for a loss, he gained five yards. He gained 10 yards. He broke three tackles. His elusive rating. There's a lot that goes into these PFF grades, and which is why I respect them and, and really look at what they do because it's not just looking at paper and saying, oh, so-and-so had a good game. So-and-so had a bad game or so-and-so did this last year. What did they really do in the game that made a difference? And um, I think that shows up on tape. And then once again, like I said, I want to show you um, what, what Trey Potts did at Big, uh, in the you know coming over in the Big Ten. He was at Minnesota. Um, first two seasons really didn't do much, but then you look at 2021 when Mo Ibrahim was hurt. He came in, had 112 rushes for uh, 552 yards and six touchdowns. So that was when he was more so like the leading back. Um, and they had another duo over there, but still, when Mo Ibrahim got hurt last year, that that killed them. That was big time. And we and we saw how good he was uh, this year as well. And when you have a running back like that, that's why Potts really said, hey, guys, I'm going to come over here. You know, last season, you know, in my college career, Penn State's developing running backs really well. Last year he had 101 rushes for 471 yards, three touchdowns. He's got 1,194 yards and really two seasons. That Those first two seasons I'm not really taking account of. He had 19 carries and seven carries. 
Um, but then also had nine touchdowns in the last two seasons. But like I said, he has that veteran uh, mentorship that he's going to bring over here uh, to Penn State that I'm excited about. I think that it's, it's really important. And once again, like I said, Kachon Allen and Nicholas Singleton don't need any help. I think they're one of the best duos in the Big Ten. But having someone like that that they can lean on, someone that's been through the motions, you know, injuries, they've been through changes, whatever comes their way, because things are going to happen. I mean, it's it's a season. We saw Park Washington get hurt. We saw a couple of things happen last year where it was kind of like these wrenches. We saw offensive linemen go down. We saw Olu Fushanu get hurt. There's a lot that can happen. So having that mentor in the running back room, and he really fits the mold, fits the culture that Penn State has, I think it, it's a great fit. Now, I think not enough people are talking about pots. Um, I know my guy Dylan on here covers Minnesota. He knows all about pots, so he can tell you a little bit more about him and how he really worked out in Minnesota. But I'm excited about it. I think this running back room is really talented. And like I said, when you look outside with the Big Ten and how Penn State really lost some games last year, it's to the running game, especially the Michigan game. That game was killer. So you have Blake Corum who's coming back. Yeah, he's coming back from an injury, but Donovan Edwards was a beast last year. Same with Trayvon Henderson, same with Mayan Williams. Like they have duos all over the Big Ten, but I really think that Katron Allen and Nicholas Singleton is a duo that you really have to pay attention to here in the Big Ten. They can do some damage. So let me know what y'all think of this running back room. How confident do you feel in it? And you can also tell me who you want to see next. What position group? I've already started playing in defense, kind of just alternating between defense and the offense. But like I said, guys, let me know what you think, expectations, stats, whatever. And hit that subscribe button as you can uh, catch up on all of your Penn State football and athletic news here. Because like I said, commit the commitments are coming in. Uh, it, it's getting hot. This is the time where everyone's you know making these visits in the summer before the season start. This is when Penn State is getting their best recruits right now. There's a ton coming up, so stay tuned here on the Penn State Rivals YouTube channel. Like I said, I'm Josh Taylor. I'll see you all next time. Peace.